So let's stay with that. How will they change the way we interact? For more on the psychology behind the technology, I'm joined from Newcastle by Professor Pam Briggs, who specialises in social psychology and internet-based communications. And here with me in the studio, uh, Dr Michael Sinclair, a consultant counselling psychologist from City Psychology Group. And both of you, uh, welcome. Thank you very much for being with us. Uh, Pam, are you going to get a pair? Sorry? Are you going to get a pair? Uh, I don't think so. Um, they're very expensive. Um, I think I'll be a very late adopter because I'll look a little bit ridiculous in the early days, I think. And um, I'm trying to wean myself off my social media as well and uh, take more time to just spend on my own. Right. What, what is it that what concerns you about them? Well, there's a couple of things, really. So if, on the one hand, if we think about the way in which we view the world, um, do I really want everything mediated through Google Glass? Do I want to have information at my fingertips all the time? Or would I sometimes just like a bit more time to live in the moment and actually um, stop and look at the flowers without being told exactly you know, what origin the flowers have? And um, The other thing, I guess, is um, I'm a bit nervous when people are looking at me with Google Glasses about whether they're taking my photograph or they're videoing me. Um, and I, have, I do have some privacy concerns. Yeah. Michael, yeah. do you have the same issues? Uh, very similar ones to Pam, of course. I mean, I think these, these are, they're a wonderful intervention. I probably will get myself a pair if I can afford them um, when they come out. But I think it's about the way we in interact with these gadgets, and I think that's really important to recognise. Um, I, I think what is important is that we're actually increasing, a, you know, creating a very scary world of information overload and we're sort of um, caging ourselves in increasing levels of stress and, and anxiety and low frustration tolerance. Um, uh, uh, paradoxically, as we try and create these faster and smarter ways of doing things. I think that um, what, what we need to be aware of is that the, the human mind evolved um, to kind of um, problem solve and to take in information in, in its effort to protect us. Um, and what we're doing is we're sort of um, overloading ourselves, bombarding ourselves with endless streams of data. Um, now, um, continuously at the risk of continuously being at the you know, in our eye line most of the time. So I think it's very important um, that we, we recognise this um, and that our tendency to create things and not run the risk of psychological exhaustion, really. I mean, I remember when MP3 players came out and you could suddenly have all your music you ever wanted and a pair of headphones and you sit on the London Underground or on a bus and everyone's, got, everyone's plugged in and they're cut off from the world, or, you know, audio-wise. Almost visually, you're going to find a similar thing happening. You, does it help you see the world more clearly, or does it cut you off from it? Well, I think not. I think it cuts you off from it. We, we get engaged with all this noise and data in our head, if you like. So we get disconnected from ourselves, from our real-life experience. We get disconnected from our, um, um, our human connection, for instance, um, and we lose touch with, with reality. I think it's um, detrimental to our social interaction and our kind of human connectedness, and I think we need to be aware of that. Uh, Pam, is it Google Glass itself that will exacerbate this, or is this just part of a process? You know, I bet you when you go out, you know, in Newcastle with a group of friends and you're in a bar or a restaurant or whatever, at least four of them will have their mobile phones on the table, checking text, checking Twitter feeds and all the rest of it. Yeah, I think you're right there, and it is part of a process. But um, one of the things when you're looking at someone and you're having a conversation face to face, at least you know when someone takes their phone out. I mean, this um, Google Glass might mean that someone can be checking their emails while pretending to talk to you, and it'll be interesting to see how they phase out in the middle of the conversation. Yes. Yeah. It, absolutely. I mean, you know, we're going to be anxious. It gives rise to social anxiety, a sense of disconnection. We don't know if someone's actually looking at us or, or lost in the ether of the World Wide Web, updating their profile on Facebook, for instance. I think it's, you know, really important to recognise that we, we, we drain the quality and vitality out of our human relationships, giving rise to anxiety, insecurity, and a sense of isolation and, and, and loneliness. Um, OK, I'm, I'm going to come to you, Michael, for a kind of final thought, because you're the one who said you will buy them if you can afford it, and we'll have a whip round for you afterwards. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but I just... Uh, what, what do you hope they would give you? What, what, what do you think, God, that's, that sounds fab? Well, they're fantastic, aren't they? It's a wonderful invention, a creation. I think, you know, that's brilliant. It can help us do things faster and so forth. But we need to stand back from them. We need to take the glasses off sometimes to not lose sight of what's important to us in life. And they may be very helpful for those that are less abled, so those that are physically um, impaired in some way, so they can, you know, uh, get, gain a better quality of life as well in some respect. Um, you know, we've created a, a fascinating world with lots of advancements in technology. We need to allow ourselves to enjoy them and not get caught up with them and, and stress us, us, ourselves out even more. So there, there are benefits, but we need to stand back from them at times. Pam, is there anything that tempts you? 
Well, you know, I'll want to try them, and probably by the time my daughter's <laughs> wearing them on a daily basis, I'll be wanting to borrow hers. But um, uh, you do worry a little bit about where it's leading. All right. Well, look, both of you, thank you very much for taking uh, the time uh, to speak to us unmediated. Only technology and kind of lines from Newcastle getting, us, getting you in vision here. So thank you very much indeed uh, for taking the time to be with us. Really good to have you with us.